So in this video class, we're going to be considering emergency supply provisions and dispensing prescriptions written outside of the UK. So emergency supplies, they can be made at the request of a doctor, dentist, supplementary prescriber, community nurse prescriber, independent nurse prescriber, independent pharmacist prescriber, optometrist, independent prescriber, doctor from the European Economic Area, or um, a Swiss doctor, a dentist, a nurse, or a pharmacist prescriber. The emergency supply can be made at the request of the patient or of a suitable prescriber. Now, if it's made at the request of a suitable prescriber, then the pharmacist must be satisfied that the request has been made um, by reason of an emergency and that prescriber is unable to supply a prescription immediately. Also, that prescriber has to agree to supply a prescription within 72 hours. You as the pharmacist need to be satisfied that the medicine in question is sold or supplied in accordance with the directions of the prescriber requesting it. The POM um, that is requested cannot be a Schedule 1, 2 or 3 controlled drug except for phenobarbital and that's only to be used for treating epilepsy. An entry is made in the POM register on the day of supply or if impractical within 24 hours. Now that entry needs to include the date of supply, the details of the medicine, the name and address of the practitioner, the name and address of the patient, the date on the prescription, and when, the, when received, the entry should be amended to show the date on which the prescription was received also. So as you can see, there are three dates that should be recorded. Um, but make note that the nature of the emergency doesn't have to be recorded in the register, but in most cases, for good um, practice, uh, you will see that the reason is actually recorded. Now a patient can also request an emergency supply and a pharmacist again, they need to interview the patient and they need to ensure that they um, are satisfied that the need is immediate for a POM and it's impractical to obtain a prescription. For that medicine to be supplied, the pharmacist needs to be satisfied that that medicine has been prescribed by one of the practitioners previously mentioned. Of course, there won't be a prescription detailing the dose um, or necessarily the particular details of the medicine. So again, it's down to the pharmacist to find out what the medicine is, so the details around that, that medicine. So you may use such evidence such as an empty um, box, an empty medication box, or you may have access to their patient medication record where they've had medication dispensed in your pharmacy before or you may have to try and contact their, their surgeries or other pharmacies that they go to to get the details. So you need to ensure that what you give them is safe, um, so the dose is appropriate. You cannot supply more than 30 day supply um, unless there's certain circumstances to allow this. Now if the medicine is a controlled drug in schedules four or five, then a maximum of five days of supply can be given. If the medicine is Schedule 1, 2 or 3 controlled drug, no supply can be given except if it is phenobarbital for the treatment of epilepsy. Now such things like insulin, ointments, creams, aerosols for asthma for example, you have to give the smallest pack size because obviously you can't break those down to give 30 day supply. Oral contraceptives again give a full supply, um, you don't break those up. And liquid antibiotics, you just give the smallest quantity to um, ensure the patient's going to have a full course of treatment. So give 30 days where appropriate, but if the actual formulation doesn't allow it, you give the smallest pack size. Now, um, as with emergency supplies at the, rest, at the request of a prescriber, a entry needs to be made in the POM register, um, and these need to be clearly recorded. Uh, you do not require a prescription to cover the supply, so that's not something you need to request afterwards. But that entry needs to have the date on which the supply was made, the details of the medication supplied, the name and address of the patient, and in this case you need to have the nature of the emergency. Now on the label of the um, dispensed medication, you need to have the date of supply, details of the medication, name of the patient, name and address of the pharmacy, keep out of the reach and sight of children. So all of those are uh, labels that we've discussed previously for any medic medication, but it also needs to have written on their emergency supply. There are some issues to consider when deciding whether to give an emergency supply at the rest request of a patient. 
So although the Medicines Act sets out the rules about what you can and cannot do, you are making a decision as to whether to supply or not um, the medication. And in making a decision, you should consider a number of issues. So what would happen if you didn't give that supply? For example, blood pressure tablets for mild hypertension, insulin for diabetes. Can you see there why um, one might be an immediate need and one might not be? So you need to make a clinical decision there. Um, it may be relevant also to consider for how long that patient needs that prescription for. So if they're away um, for for you know for a month, maybe that blood pressure tablet for mild hypertension um, goes up on the priority list, and you do think that it's appropriate to to supply. Also, you might want to consider that the person who's presenting themselves are who they say they are. Do you really have enough information to make a decision? Um, and would it be better to contact the prescriber? So you need to do the investigative work to ensure that when you do make a supply, you are completely satisfied that all of the requirements are met. If during your checks you find that the treatment has been stopped, it may not be appropriate to start again without referring the patient to the doctor, so it might not be appropriate to actually give an emergency supply. Also, if the patient hasn't had a prescription recently, you may want to think again whether it's appropriate to give a supply, and you just must uh, use your professional judgment in making decisions to carry out the checks. Think about whether you need to give 30 days. Um, this could be unnecessary and it could also be expensive for the patient. So again, use your professional judgment and common sense. Um, where a prescription is can be provided later, um, some people will, will class that as a loan. Um, you should still treat this as an emergency supply, make all of the, um, the records as if it was an emergency supply. Um, payment isn't a legal requirement. But if there is no prescription to be issued, then the, the pharmacy needs to be reimbursed for, for those medications. So the patients may be asked for a fee. If an NHS prescription is provided, then a refundable charge could be made. If, um, as a pharmacist, you feel that you cannot make an emergency supply of medicine, then you should do everything possible to advise the patient how to obtain um, essential medical care. So that may be um, going to an NHS walk-in centre, A&E, um, or temporary registration at a GP practice. Now if we look at prescriptions outside of the UK, so unless the prescriber is registered in the UK or in an EEA country or Switzerland, then the prescription for a POM is not legally valid in the UK. Patients presenting with such prescriptions signed by pr practitioners from outside these areas will need to be referred to an appropriate UK prescriber. Now since 2008, valid prescriptions issued by doctors or dentists in a um, in an EEA country or, or Switzerland, have been re legally recognised in the UK. Now, from March 31st, 2014, the law has been amended to extend the range of prescribers and to introduce new prescription requirements. So um, now nurses and pharmacists prescribers um, can be accepted. Prescriptions from these practitioners can be accepted in the UK. They are now valid. And the new prescription requirements include the patient's full first name, surname and date of birth, the prescriber's full name, surname, professional qualifications, direct contact details including email address, telephone number or fax number and work address, the name of the medicine, form, quantity and strength and also the dosage details and there also needs to be the signature and date of issue. So in this uh, video cast we've looked at emergency supplies both at the request of doctors and of patients. We've looked at, um, and we've briefly looked at prescriptions from um, non-UK, EEA or Swiss prescribers that are valid within the UK.